Badala was Thomas Sutcliffe Mort's country estate. But who was this man, Thomas Mort? Thomas Mort was one of the great figures of trade and industry in Australia in the 19th century, and he was a man of vision and big ideas. He believed passionately that the growing colony of New South Wales had to develop its own agriculture and manufacturing industries and not depend on imports. All Saints Church in Badala was built after Thomas's death to honour both him and his first wife, Teresa. The people of Sydney erected this statue in Macquarie Place in Sydney to honour Thomas. Thomas made a lot of money in the 1840s, initially from specialised wool auctions, and then he got into pastoral financing. This was his Sydney house, Green Oaks at Darling Point. He owned about 11 acres at, at Darling Point, and uh, his brother Henry and his brother-in-law owned uh, basically the rest of Darling Point. Thomas started building this new wool store in Sydney in 1865 to provide more storage space, of course, for, for his wool. And this, of course, is down at Circular Quay and is the exact site where the AMP building is today. The building was actually designed um, by Edmund Blackett. The roof was designed by Horbury Hunt, who was at that stage in the 1860s working with the Blacketts. Ten years after Thomas's death, Mort and Company combined with Goldsborough to become Goldsborough Mort, and then, of course, various manifestations over the years after that. In 1854-55, he constructed the first-class dry dock for large steamships at Balmain. Here he is talking to his manager down at the docks. But what's interesting about the docks is that at that stage, in the, in in the mid-1850s, the closest dock for any repairs to be done to any ships coming out to Australia was Bombay in India. So if Australia was to establish a good regular mail service and really increase trade, it needed its own docks and, and that's why Thomas initiated these in Sydney. It meant that companies could send steamers to Sydney confident that they could repair them if needed. It also led to many overseas companies establishing their headquarters in Sydney. The dock actually opened in 1855 and um, it's also interesting that this followed of course the gold rushes and more recognised the upsurge in trade that would follow the increased population from the gold finds. So he was a man of great ideas. From the 1860s Thomas really started to develop daring on the Badala estate and what he achieved was the first commercial production of cheese in Australia where milk from several different sources were manipulated to produce a uniform quality product, a cheese that would rival English imports and that of course was Thomas's aim. Thomas Mort was also a great pioneer in refrigeration. He sponsored a man called Eugene Nicole uh, in his refrigeration um, experiments. Basically, he refrigerated railway trucks developed by Nicole with Mort's financial backing and transported the milk to their cold store, which is at Darling Harbour, and the milk distributed from there. That cold store is where the Chinese gardens are today. Thomas had this vision of a, a trade in frozen meat to England centred on his refrigeration company, the New South Wales Fresh Food and Ice Company, which he established at Dar Darling Harbour. Thomas, by this stage, had a lot of property throughout the colony, and the value of that property, the value of those properties was closely allied to the value of the livestock. So during periods of drought, the li value of the livestock would drop. Now, Thomas outlined to, to Laidley that... If he could develop uh, a method of freezing carcasses, it would increase the value of sheep, uh, which at that time were almost valueless and ruining him and everyone else who had property at the time. It could also generate a vast amount of work for the dock, for Mort's dock at, uh, at Balmain Roselle, and it, could, it would create profitable business for London and the Sydney ends of Mort and Company. And his vision actually became an obsession in the 1870s because you saw the value not just to him but to the whole colony. It was not till after Thomas's death that, uh, that a successful shipment was made and of course uh, that, that opened up a whole new export industry for Australia. When Thomas died in 1878, the whole nation mourned. One of the leading Sydney papers at the time, the Sydney Mail, published a full-page insert of a portrait of Thomas Mort shown here. 
and the paper said, we're confident that the portrait will be prized and treasured in many households which owe or have owed their comfort and content in no small degree to the manner in which the enterprise and patriotism of Mr Mort caused capital to circulate by the establishment or initiation of industries new to the colony.